So there, <laughs> this beast is finally up and working. Uh, it's not done, I gotta do detail on a few things, change out some nuts and bolts, some other things that aren't original. And I've got a little bit more to do on it, but it, it's functioning now, I can do scroll work. So today we're gonna be taking this, um, if you haven't seen my last video where I brought this in, and I have a couple other videos in the process, I'll leave a link to those down below. But today we're doing all the things that are needed to actually get this thing functioning. Uh, is it done? No, there's gonna be a few more things I'm gonna do on it. But for right now, we're gonna dive into making this thing work. So let's go on for the ride, this is gonna be fun. Originally, I wanted to make this wheel out of white oak, as white oak would be much heavier and actually get fairly close to the weight of the original wheel. However, I didn't have um, white oak at the time, which, surprise, surprise, I know I'm out of white oak, so I, did, I actually decided to use red oak. Um, okay, that's, uh, yeah, uh, let's use some red oak on this. So I want to actually create plywood, basically. Um, rather than making out a bunch of thin plies, I'm just going to make it out of uh, three larger plies, half inch thick and three quarter inch core. I uh, might have a little bit of issue with expansion and contraction in the future, but probably not much of anything that's going to uh, cause an issue as it's, uh, it's fairly well held together. So I'm going to be cutting up all of these layers to glue them together. Most of them are only four inches wide, so it's going to be a lot of laminated pieces um, glued together in both thickness and in width. And so a lot of marking to length, ripping down, and marking to length, and ripping down. Um, yeah, the, the nice thing is though, uh, red oak is so much easier to work with than white oak. Um, everything is just surprisingly easy. I'm just finding out um, how big all these pieces need to be because the maximum size of it is 24 inches. So it'll be a square 24 inches by 24 inches. So all the boards need to be 24 inches long, but then I also need to rip down one piece to make it 24 inches wide as well. Then layer on the glue, slather it around, and attach it. Uh, made sure to have glue on all of the joints in between pieces, as well as a full coating on both sides that go down onto the surface. So after spreading it all on, then we can set on one layer and then repeat the process again. Coat the next layer, and uh, it's just three layers in this particular setup, rather than doing a whole bunch of uh, pieces of veneer. And then we can get to the clamping process. And this is where I, I kind of had a little bit of, um, how exactly do I want to do this with weighting the middle of it and actually getting the clamping pressure all the way around on all the seams. So I ended up using all of my hand screw clamps and I used all of them. And I think I have, what, a dozen or so. Um, some with wooden screws, some with metal screws. And I went all the way around trying to put them on all of the seams so that the pressure is uh, where they want to bubble up. Now you may have noticed earlier that the thin layers were cupped and that's because they were actually absorbing the glue and that was making the side that the glue was touching cup and uh, flexing out so that I had to push that back down into place. So clamps all the way around the perimeter and you can see all the glue squeezing out here and there letting me know that it was a, a, significant, a significant amount. Um, I had a few clamps where I could actually reach into the middle and squeeze out towards the middle, but then for the majority of the clamp, I ended up putting several weights on top. Um, so once I put it all in there, I probably had about 200, 250 pounds um, put into the center of it. Probably could have used a little bit more, but oh well, uh, this will work fine. Now we can take off all the clamps and start turning this square into a round wheel. And that's a lot of stock removal, especially for hand tools. Um, I found that uh, I needed to turn it into an octagon first. So after cleaning everything off, I wanted to play with this and see, you know, what would be the actual best way of turning this into a circle. So marking it off, I just took a scrap board, put a nail through it, and then drilled a hole at 24 inches um, in diameter or 12 inches radius and saw where the circle actually was on the board then drew off a 45 degree angle at each of the corners so that it uh, intersected with the edge of the circle and then cut it into an octagon. And I thought this would be pretty close and I'd just chop off the corners with a the chisel there. Um, and I came to find out I really needed to take off more material because it was a lot to take off of the chisel. And especially with it this way, the, the grain is reversing, making the chisel work very hard. But before I went any farther, I wanted to flatten it out and smooth both sides. There was a lot of glue on there, and there was a, a good bit that wasn't quite even, so I took a scrub plane to take a, a thin layer off, then grabbed my number six to smooth it all out, flatten it out, 
and bring it all into a nice finish. Uh, then I grabbed my uh, number four, I think it was, and smoothed everything out after the number six to get it that really nice clean surface. Let's see, was the number four? Oh, no, it was the four and a half. I was wrong. <laughs> four and a half being a little bit wider makes it easier to cover a little bit uh, wider range in, in, with each pass. So after that, I realized I needed to lop off all eight corners and turn it into a, what, a 16 a gone? Um, <laughs> whatever that ends up being. That actually gets it pretty close to being round. So at this point, I could come in with the chisel and go to town on it. Uh, grabbed a one-inch chisel and just brought it back close to that line. And I don't need this to be perfectly round. I'm going to be actually turning it round uh, later with uh, turning tools. So I'm just getting it close to being round so I don't have to take off quite as much with the, the turning tools. Uh, basically taking off all those corners again, but getting it fairly close. Then I can bring in the smoke sa spoke shave and smooth it out. Again, I'm not looking for perfectly round. I'm looking more or less for smooth. Uh, I don't want anything sticking out and, and being a, uh, a finger catch catching hazard. So after hitting with the spoke shave, then uh, we're ready to start playing with uh, putting the center in this. How does this actually work together? And yeah, um, the bench gets dirty, so let's clean it up. <laughs> How do you like my bench brush? Um, I was too lazy to reach down and grab it from underneath the bench, so square works well. For the center of this, I actually have a uh, um, um, a thing that I found, and it's got a three-quarter inch hole that matches up with the um, that matches up with the frame, and then the outside diameter is larger, so I can use this adjustable auger to match the size that it needs to be. And you can see I have a ratcheting here, and that's because I can get more pressure on the downstroke than I can on the upstroke. And so I just ratchet it um, where I have more strength. And then occasionally I can go all the way around, but most of the time I'm just using the, the ratcheting feature. Then slide it in and drill out the other side. And I went a step larger than three quarter so that the rod would slide through the hole a little bit easier. It gives it a little bit of flexibility as well. And then we can see if this actually fits. And wahoo, it fits in place. Uh, I just need to put three bolts that go all the way through to the wheel into this hub. And so we need to drill out the hole for those bolts to go through. And then they thread into the hub on the other side. And uh, I think it was uh, quarter inch bolts that went through. And uh, I grabbed a bit a little bit larger than quarter inch so the, bits, uh, the bolts actually slide through. Here you can see I'm using a different brace so that it's a, it's a shorter throw, making it easier for the smaller holes. Once I get the bolts in place, then we can file them down to the right thickness, and it's just about ready to go. But before we do that, I need to cut the shaft down. I bought a shaft, and this is actually a keyed shaft. Later on, you'll see I changed over to a smooth shaft um, because the, the frame was designed for a smooth shaft, but the hubs that I have came with a keyed shaft, and I didn't quite realize that until after I got it all in place. So here we're putting in the keyed shaft, and right about here I realize, uh-oh, uh, I never measured the width of the frame. Oops. Um, yeah, um, we need to work at this, so I need to make this whole wheel thinner, and then inset the hub into the space so that it all fits inside. The Between the frame I had two inches, and for some reason I was thinking I had two and a half inches. Um, and on top of that, the frame is actually twisted so that the hub at the outside edges needs to be down to almost an inch, um, otherwise it's hitting the frame. And I still left it a little bit wide so it still scuffs the frame occasionally, uh, but I need to cut this all down. So I'm going to use a gouge and chisels to inset it a little bit deeper, check it with the depth gauge, and then bring it to a flat surface all the way around so that this hub will slide down in as well. And then the inside here, I need to take that down another quarter inch as well. And it's nice to have a strop on the uh, the bench so that you can just keep your tools sharp rather than actually having to take them back and sharpen them on the stones. Um, having a strop, keeping them really nice and honed, it makes it quick and easy. So we can tap this down into place and countersink the bolts. Because originally I was just going to have bolt heads sticking out the other side, now I had to have uh, countersunk um, flathead uh, um, bolts to, to countersink in there. Then we can drive in the axle and give it a test spin and here you can see that i suddenly realized oh no it's catching the frame is twisted um, so i need to do some work thinning out the wheel and i plane that down as well the other thing i need to have is a set screw that goes through the hub and clamps down onto the shaft 
and so I needed to clean out a little bit of space because now the hub is inset I needed a way to actually um, grab the bolt and tighten it down onto the shaft I also changed out this grade 5 bolt to a grade 8 bolt uh, because I needed to put a little bit more torque on it I didn't want the chance of breaking it off so here you can see I'm actually planing down the outside edge um, so that it's not inch and a half it, the outside edge ends up being about one inch so I'm taking um, what is that, about a quarter inch off of either side to bring it down to thickness. And the wheel actually tapers, so at the outside it is an inch, uh, about an inch wide, and then in the middle it's still a full inch and a half. And that way it uh, doesn't run into the frame. This was a lot more work than I anticipated, taking a decent amount of material off this thing. But with a little bit of elbow grease and some time and uh, good music playing in the background, it's done. <laughs> Now we can try putting this in again. And I went back and forth with this several times in the whole mechanics of how it went together and playing with the, the hub and the sprockets that go on the outside um, for the connection of the wheel, uh, the shaft to the two piston arms. Um, I ended up getting these um, go-kart hubs and they're designed so you could put sprockets on them for chain. And I found that it was just the right throw to fit these arms on. And so in the future, I may end up changing, uh, I will be changing the connection from the arms to these hubs. But right now, this is just a temporary to hold them in place and actually check them. But uh, at this point, we got the wheel running and I was really, really happy. So I thought, ooh, okay, let's put a hole on here. And then Luke got on it and started running it so I could put the gouge and put in the, uh, the track for the belt to go in. And driving it with the feet actually ended up there. Uh, not having enough um, continuous torque to cut it and we would be getting close and getting close and then suddenly we catch um, and it was just it was, it was taking way too much time to carve the gouge this way so I thought about taking it out and actually manually carving the gouge uh, carving the groove with a gouge um, but at this point I realized wait a second what if we could just put a handle on the shaft and then Luke can spin it and here you go um, it actually worked really well and so he spun it and I was able to carve the groove all the way around and uh, it, it took a fraction of the time I was expecting so I'm very very happy with that a leather belt um, I wanted to put it around there and I cut it to a close length here and then I took it back and I cut two inches off of it um, and you want this to be nice and tight so once you can clamp the two ends together then you can pop it onto the the belt and it's very stretchy uh, you drill a hole through either end of the belt and that allows you to put in this little steel clip that they can connect the two ends together and you can crimp the end of the clip onto one end feed it through the whole system and then crimp it onto the other one and crimp that one down and then you can actually pop it onto the wheel and have uh, a good bit of tension into it so it holds on to the smaller sprocket. And we're pretty much there. So now we need to put a blade into this thing and take it for a test drive. I ended up having some hardware issues on the blade connector. Uh, another thing I'm going to have to change in the future. Um, need to go get a, a couple more pieces of that. Um, and then there was another piece of hardware at the other end that is causing the head to... Uh, um, tilt at a slightly odd angle, catching, uh, causing it to catch occasionally. Uh, so I need to actually work on that. Um, but with all that being said, it is working and I am very happy. Um, I'm thinking about making a clock here soon, a wooden geared clock. And so I'm kind of experimenting and playing with a few ideas in that. I want to do a few of these little last items of changing hardware here and there and, and getting it uh, more functioning. But right now it's, it's working and here you can see that's about the speed to pedal it. And I'm just happy. So I, I probably spent a good what, 15, 20 minutes of just making weird lines on a couple pieces of wood and having a good time in the shop. So I'd love to hear your feedback. What do you uh, want to see me do with this in the future? And I'm having a lot of fun. So there you have it. It is functioning. And now I, I really just wanted to get this working because I want to have a working scroll saw in my shop. Is this wheel exactly what I want? No. Does it work? Yes, it works. Um, could it work better? Yes, it could work better. I could put more weight in it or other things like that. I mean, it's, it's fairly heavy as it is, but it's not quite as heavy as the original. Sometime in the future, I might actually do a video on making an original wheel, which is a very, very detailed thing and get into doing some pattern work and show how that's done. But for right now, this will do me fine and I can actually do some scroll work on this until I get an actual fly
flywheel in here. There are a few other nuts and bolts on this that I need to replace, things that aren't quite exact or as tight as they need to be, but with a little bit more work, this can actually be a really nice functioning saw, even with this flywheel. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. This has been a fun one for me, and I'm gonna have a few videos coming up. I'm thinking about doing a clock and actually doing wooden gears with this. So if you'd like to see that, let me know but we're gonna be having a little fun. If you see anything you'd like me to change or you have some input you'd like to throw in there, go ahead and put that in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. Also, if you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out the channel, and thank you for that. So I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Whatever you do, stop scrolling and watch this video.